It is on, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm gonna want more than this. So. Chapter 4 But the next night, about midnight, Coughlin and I, and I and Alva got together and decided to buy a big gallon jug of burgundy and go bust in on Jakey on his shack. What's he doing tonight? I asked. Oh, says Coughlin. Probably studying, probably screwing. We'll go see. We bought the jug on Shattuck Avenue, way down, Shattuck Avenue way down, and went over and once more, I saw his pitiful I saw his pitiful English bicycle on the lawn. JP travels around on that bicycle with his little knapsack on his back all up and down Berkeley all day, said Coughlin. He used to do the same thing at Reed College in Oregon. He was a regular fixture up there. Then we'd throw big wine parties and have girls and end up jumping out of windows and playing Joe college pranks all up and down the town. Gee, he's strange, said Alva, biting his lip, in a mood of marvel, and Alva himself was making a careful, interested study of our strange, noisy, quiet friend. We came in the little door again. Jiffy looked up from his cross-legged study over book, American poetry this time, glasses on, and said nothing but, ah, in a strangely cultured tone. We took off our shoes and padded across the little five feet of straw to sit fly him. But I was last with my shoes off, and had the jug in my hand, which I turned to show him from across the shack, and from his cross-legged position, Jafee suddenly roared, Yah! and leaped up into the air and straight across the room to me, landing on his feet in, on, in a fencing position with a sudden dagger in his hand, the tip of it just barely stabbing the glass of the bottle with a small distinct clink. It was the most amazing leap I ever saw in my life, except my nutty acrobats, which, like a mountain goat, which he was, it turned out. Also, it, it reminded me of Japanese samurai warrior, the yelling roar, the leap, the position, and his expression of comic wrath, with his eyes bulging and making a big funny face at me. I had a feeling it was really, really a complaint against our breaking in on his studies and against wine itself, which would get him drunk and make him his, miss his planned evening of reading. But without further ado, he uncapped the bottle himself and took a big slug, and we all sat cross-legged and spent four hours screaming news at one another. One of the funniest nights. Some of it went like this. <sighs> Jaffe. Well, Coughlin, you old fart. What, what you be doing? What you been doing? Coughlin. Nothing. Alva. What are all these strange books here? Hmm. Pound. Do you like pound? Jaffe. Except for the fact that the that old fart face flubbed up the name of Lee Po by calling him by his Japanese name and all such famous twaddle, he was all right. In fact, he's my favorite poet, Ray. Pound? Who wants to make a favorite poet out of that pretentious nut? Jaffe. Have some more wine, Smith. You're not making sense. Who's your favorite poet, Alva? Ray. Why don't, so why don't somebody ask me my favorite poet? 
I know more about poetry than all of you put together, JV. Is that true? Is that true? Alva, it might be. Haven't you seen Ray's new book of poems he just wrote in Mexico? The wheel of the quivering meat conception turns in the void as expelling ticks, porcupines, elephants, people, stardust, schools, nonsense. Ray, that's not it. JV, speaking of meat, JV, speaking of meat, have you read the new poem of etc., etc.? Then, finally disintegrating into a wild talk fest and yell fest and finally song fest with people rolling on the floor in laughter and ending with Alva and Kaufman and I going staggering up the quiet college street arm in arm singing Eli, Eli at the top of our voices and dropping the empty jug right at our feet in a crash of glass as JP laughed from his little door. But we'd made him miss his evening of studying and I felt bad about that till the following night when he suddenly appeared at our little cottage, cottage with a pretty girl and came in and told her to take her clothes off, which she did at once.